the most hidden sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. This story begins with these two cities in the book of Genesis during Abraham's time. Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed. The city of sin. In those days, Sodom and Gomorrah were prosperous and thriving on the surface. Secretly, they were filled with evil. Sodom and Gomorrah, often known as sinful cities, make us think deeply about what is right and wrong and what happens because of what we do. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah started with a revelation. The sin in these cities had become so great that it had reached the heavens. Then the Lord said, The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. This verse highlights the difference between knowing something and witnessing it firsthand. For instance, God knows how much we honor and love Him, but He wants us to show this through our actions and service. Similarly, the conversation between God and Abraham about justice isn't because God needs to be reminded to do what's right. It's more about Abraham understanding the nature of justice. The verse emphasizes that the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah's sins prompted God's response, highlighting the importance of actions and their visible impact. Imagine a time before the birth of Isaac, Abraham's long-awaited son, Abraham known for his unwavering faith and exceptional hospitality, presents a contrast to the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. His life shines as an example of hope and kindness, surrounded by cities filled with selfishness and evil. Abraham prays for the cities. We reach a critical moment as we get to the central part of the story. God had made a unique promise to Abraham, an agreement that would change the future for many people. During this time, God told Abraham about his plans to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their extreme behavior. But Abraham, ever the intercessor, pleaded with God for the righteous living among the sinners in those cities. His plea was not just a mere request. It was the appeal of a prophet who cared deeply for the lives of others, even those he didn't know. Abraham approached the Lord and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Genesis chapter 18, verse 23. Abraham's conversation with God reflects a common ancient belief. People were often seen as part of a group, like a family or city, rather than individuals. If one person did wrong, the whole group might face consequences. This idea is also seen in other ancient texts, like the Hittite prayer of Mersili in the Gilgamesh epic, where leaders pray that only the guilty be punished, not the innocent. Abraham's plea for Sodom is similar. He was asking God to spare the city if there were enough righteous people, highlighting the idea of individual responsibility over collective punishment. This shows an early recognition of personal accountability and communal identity. The Wealth of Sodom and Gomorrah Sodom and Gomorrah thrived in their prosperity as wealthy nations, yet were blinded by their excesses and moral corruption. The people living there didn't realize that disaster was about to happen because they were too caught up in pleasing themselves. On the other hand, Abraham, who was a good and moral person, was very different. He tried to save any good people who might have been living in those cities. In this case, it isn't just about the judgment that fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. It's also about mercy, compassion, and the power of intercession. It tells us how much difference one person can make when they decide to help others, even when it seems like the chances are against them. The lives of the people. As the story goes on, we meet the main people living in these cities. Their lives are made up of different choices and things they do, and each one plays a part in what ends up happening to them. This isn't just about what happened in the past. It's like a mirror that shows us our own lives and the world we live in. This story strongly hints at what will happen later. It reminds us that our actions can lead to results that can't be changed and might affect many things. This warning about the dangers of letting morals slip shows how important it is to live a life based on good values. The Rise of Sin The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah has been the subject of much debate and interpretation. Traditional views often cite lust and depravity as the principal offense, as evidenced by the townspeople's actions towards the angels that visited Lot. Different interpretations agree that the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were complex, 
involving not just sexual wrongdoing, but also a lack of care and respect for others. The story in Genesis 19 and other parts of the Bible, like 2 Peter and Jude, show a pattern of harmful and lawless actions that deeply affected good people like Lot. So, what exactly were these sins? The primary sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was a mix of issues, including sexual immorality, lack of hospitality, pride, and violence. With all this, there is one that stands out, which is often overlooked. And if you stick to the end, you will understand why. In Genesis 19, the men of Sodom displayed a lack of hospitality, coupled with violent intentions towards Lot's guests. But here is what really happened. The arrival of divine messengers. It was about when angels visited the well-known cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. As evening set in, the old cities of Sodom and Gomorrah received two special visitors from heaven, looking like ordinary men, but with a subtle hint of something more. Lot, living in Sodom and related to Abraham, quickly sensed they were no ordinary travelers. In those times, welcoming guests was not just polite, but a very important responsibility. Recognizing this, Lot invited them to stay at his house for the night. The reaction of the city's inhabitants to these visitors is immediate and telling. Crowds gathered, driven by a mix of curiosity and darker motives. The atmosphere in Sodom and Gomorrah was chaotic and disrespectful, especially towards the visitors and Lot's hospitality. The crowd's forceful and relentless behavior showed just how much the city's moral values had declined. In this moment, the true nature of Sodom and Gomorrah came to light. Biblical text, specifically in Genesis 19, narrates the situation's intensity, showcasing the conflict between Lot's protective hospitality and the townsmen's aggressive intentions. This tension sets the stage for the divine judgment that is to follow. The men of Sodom, young and old, demand these guests be brought out to them for sexual purposes. Before they lay down to sleep, men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house, all the men from every quarter, five. And they called out to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them intimately. Genesis chapter 19, verses four through five. There was extreme wickedness in Sodom, where the townspeople, instead of showing hospitality, demanded to sexually assault the visitors. This act violated the strong customs of guest protection in ancient societies. Lot's offer of his daughters to protect his guests, though not taken up, showed his commitment to protecting his guests. The angel's intervention, striking the attackers with blindness, prevented the assault and highlighted the gravity of the situation. This passage reveals the depth of moral corruption in Sodom and the importance of hospitality in ancient cultures. But was it just about sexual immorality? Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 through 50, expands our understanding, highlighting other grievous sins. Behold, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters, outlying cities, had arrogance, abundant food, and careless ease. But she did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and committed repulsive acts before me. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. These verses emphasize the presence of pride. Apathy and neglect of the needy is part of their wrongdoing. In the Bible, the Hebrew term often translated as detestable things is used to describe morally offensive acts. Additionally, Jude chapter 1 verse 7 highlights that sexual immorality and perversion were significant issues. There's much discussion about Sodom and Gomorrah's main wrongdoing. Some think it was mainly about being inhospitable to the guests and breaking important cultural rules. Others see the story as showing a range of serious moral problems, including sexual misbehavior, excessive pride, and not caring for the needy. Unveiling the darkness. Lot's hospitality. Imagine a scene where two angels, disguised as ordinary men, enter the notorious cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here, the first lesson unfolds. A society's character is often reflected in its hospitality. It was evening when the two angels came to Sodom. Lot was sitting at Sodom's city gate. Seeing them, Lot got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. This gesture by Lot, in a place marked by its moral decline, is a clear contrast. It begs the question, 
How often do we overlook the opportunity to extend kindness to strangers? Interestingly, the angels initially refused Lot's offer of hospitality. They said, no, we will spend the night in the square. Genesis chapter 19, verse 2. Lot insisted that the angels stay with him. This part of the story makes you think, why did the angels say no at first? Was it to see if Lot meant his offer, or did it show how unfriendly Sodom was known to be? As the narrative unfolds, it becomes evident that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just about sexual immorality. It was about a lack of basic human decency and kindness. Lot's act of sheltering these guests shows the severity of the city's moral bankruptcy in a place where people didn't welcome visitors and looked at strangers badly. Lot's kind behavior really stood out as a good example. The story makes us think, how do we treat the strangers among us? Are we like Lot, offering shelter and protection, or do we embody the unwelcoming spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah? The way we treat the least among us often reflects our society's true values. Divine intervention. Here, the angels intervene, protecting Lot's family from the mob and then informing them of the impending doom of the city. And the two men, angels, ask Lot, have you any others here in Sodom, a son-in-law and your sons and your daughters? Whomever you have in the city, take them out of here, for we are destroying this place, because the outcry for judgment against them has grown so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy and ruin it. Genesis chapter 19, verses 12 through 13. This declaration sets the stage for an intense narrative of urgency and escape. Lot, Abraham's nephew, is in Sodom, and these angels urgently instruct him to gather his family and flee. The urgency is palpable in Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. As the story progresses, Countdown to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah begins. With the dawn approaching, the time for these cities to face their consequences was near. This looming disaster is a moment in history and symbolizes a larger future judgment. When the angels warned about the coming destruction, there was a real rush to act quickly. They told Lot to get his family and leave right away because the city would be judged soon. But getting his family to believe and leave wasn't easy. Lot seemed a bit slow to move, and his sons-in-law thought he was joking about the danger. The struggle to get his family to leave highlights how hard it can be to leave behind what's familiar, even if it's harmful. The escape route was not a leisurely walk, but a race against time. The urgency was clear. When they had brought them outside, one of the angels said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you or stop anywhere in the entire valley. Escape to the mountains of Moab or you will be consumed and swept away. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. The family's flight was marked by a sense of urgency, a flight from the familiar to the unknown, from comfort to survival. As they fled, the cities behind them were being consumed. Then the Lord rained down brimstone, flaming sulfur, and fire on Sodom and on Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew, demolished, ended, cities and the entire valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and whatever grew on the ground. Genesis chapter 19 verses 24 through 25. This event wasn't just a natural disaster, it symbolized divine judgment. The image of a city engulfed in flames and brimstone is a reminder of the consequences of moral decay and disobedience. Interestingly, God's decision to save Lot and his family was influenced by Abraham. While the cities were ultimately destroyed due to their wickedness, God remembered Abraham's plea and saved Lot as an act of mercy towards Abraham. Now when God ravaged and destroyed the cities of the plain of Siddim, he remembered Abraham and for that reason, and he sent Abraham's nephew Lot out of the midst of the destruction when he destroyed the cities in which Lot had lived. Genesis chapter 19, verse 29. Lot's wife's tragic fate as they escaped. She looked back at Sodom and turned into a pillar of salt, which serves as a representation of the consequences of longing for a sinful past. Her transformation into salt in the midst of the region's salt pillars stands as a reminder of this disaster. 
Jesus later references this event in Luke chapter 17, verse 32, cautioning against hesitating in the face of God's judgment. On the other hand, Abraham witnesses the smoke rising from the city, a moment that emphasizes the power of his prayers, which ultimately leads to Lot and his family's salvation. This narrative emphasizes the importance of obedience and the impact of intercessory prayer in times of judgment. The aftermath of the destruction. The narrative doesn't shy away from the disturbing aftermath involving Lot's daughters. In the cave where they take refuge, fearing the extinction of their family line, they intoxicated their father, Lot, to lay with him, resulting in both sisters being pregnant by him. This part of the story highlights the pervasive and lasting impact that living in a morally corrupt environment had on Lot's daughters. The actions of Lot's daughters might be seen as being shaped by the negative environment in Sodom. They likely learned or were affected by the evil they saw around them in the city. Sodom and Gomorrah in the New Testament. Fast forward to the New Testament, and we find Sodom and Gomorrah taking on a metaphorical significance symbolizing the final judgment in the end of times. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, the destruction of these cities serves as a warning and example of God's judgment on ungodly living. It says, And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was tormented by the immoral conduct of unprincipled and ungodly men, for that just man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by what he saw and heard of their lawless acts. Similarly, in Revelation, Sodom is used to depict the ultimate downfall of a corrupt world system. This is a powerful example of how justice is carried out by divine means, leading to the complete removal of evil. Sodom and Gomorrah today. For years, many scholars doubted their existence. However, Archaeological evidence has since pointed to their location near the Dead Sea. The cities were part of a group known as the Cities of the Plain, and they were likely located in the vicinity of the Dead Sea. Some theories suggested they were submerged under the sea, but recent receding waters and archaeological work have not supported this. It wasn't until 1973 that significant archaeological evidence emerged, suggesting the possible locations of these cities southeast of the Dead Sea. Excavations at sites like Bab ed Dara and Numeria have shown connections to the early Bronze Age, aligning with the biblical timeline. This discovery has reignited discussions about the historical accuracy of the biblical narratives and the true nature of the city's destruction. Consequences of Sin The story of Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction is dramatic, but a reminder of the consequences of sin. The description captures the intensity and the suddenness of the destruction. It's not just a physical demolition of cities. It's a representation of divine judgment against extreme wickedness. Reflecting on the aftermath of this divine judgment, it's crucial to consider the broader implications of this event. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is a powerful illustration of God's stance on sin and righteousness. The story makes us think about our own lives and the society we're a part of. We should ask ourselves if we overlook what God wants us to do. Are there parts of our lives that we should rethink to align with God's expectation? How does this apply to us today? Comparing the story of Sodom and Gomorrah to modern society can be quite thought-provoking. In Jude chapter 1, verse 5, the destruction of these cities is a reminder of divine judgment against deep moral decay. Some people believe that today's society is facing a decline in moral values. This is seen in more rude and crude language, weakening family values, changes in traditional ideas about marriage, and moving away from the teachings of the Bible. There is a sense that personal achievements and pride have overshadowed humility and modesty. This societal shift raises questions about readiness for divine judgment or spiritual awakening. The Bible in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, speaks about the day of the Lord coming unexpectedly and emphasizes the need for living in holiness and godliness, looking forward to a new world of righteousness. This serves as a reminder to reflect on our values and actions in today's world. What can we do differently 
Now, let's talk about self-reflection on personal actions. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a personal call to each of us. It's easy to point fingers at societal sins, but what about our own actions? Are we contributing to the moral decay in small ways? Care for the needy. Are we ignoring the needs of those around us, indulging in selfish desires, or turning a blind eye to injustice? This story is a wake-up call to examine our lives and align our actions with moral and ethical values. So, what can we learn from Sodom and Gomorrah? It's not just about fire and brimstone. It's about understanding that our actions, both as individuals and as a society, have consequences. It's a reminder to check ourselves, think about how we're living, and try to do better every day. Let's use this story not to scare us, but to guide us towards being better people, making better choices, and creating a world that's kinder, fairer, and more just. Show kindness. In today's fast-paced world, we often overlook the power of hospitality and compassion. But just as Lot's kindness stood out in Sodom, our acts of compassion can shine brightly in a sometimes indifferent world. Whether offering a listening ear, a helping hand, or a place of refuge, these actions create ripples, impacting lives and knitting communities together. See hospitality as a community's heartbeat. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah teaches us that a community's moral health can be gauged by how it treats its guests and vulnerable members. In contrast to Sodom's harshness, Lot's hospitality reveals a heart for others' well-being. But he made them strongly welcome, and they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Genesis chapter 19, verse 3. Embracing God's warnings. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible is a powerful narrative about the consequences of ignoring God's warnings. But how does this story teach us the importance of being receptive to guidance and maintaining spiritual awareness? In our daily lives, embracing divine warnings can manifest in various ways. It could be heeding the subtle nudges of our conscience when making decisions, listening to the advice of those wiser than us, or paying attention to the lessons learned from past experiences. It's about being mindful of the impact of our actions on ourselves and others and striving to live a life that is honorable and just. Consider the characters in this story and their reactions to God's warnings. In Genesis 19, angels warn Lot about the impending destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's response is immediate. He understands the gravity of the situation and acts. This is a critical moment that emphasizes the importance of going in line with divine guidance. What is the relevance of this story in contemporary life? In our fast-paced world, it's easy to become engulfed in material pursuits and neglect our spiritual well-being. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah reminds us to stay spiritually aware and listen to the guidance that comes our way, whether it be through scripture, conscience, or life experiences. Spiritual awareness isn't just about religious observance. It's about being in tune with the deeper moral and ethical implications of our actions. It's about recognizing the signs and warnings in our lives and taking proactive steps to align ourselves with a path of righteousness and compassion. How do we resist this moral decay? It begins with self-awareness. We must constantly examine our actions and intentions, asking ourselves if we're contributing positively to our community. Practical steps include volunteering and being mindful of our consumption. It's about living a life that values empathy and kindness over selfishness and indifference. Encouraging individuals to uphold moral values is not just about preaching. It's about leading by example. It's about creating an environment where integrity, honesty, and compassion are valued and celebrated. We can do this by being accountable for our actions, making ethical choices, and standing up for what is right, even when it's difficult. Our personal choices have a ripple effect on society. The Bible warns us, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. This means that our actions, whether good or bad, have consequences. By choosing to live with integrity, we contribute to a more just and compassionate society. Conversely, when we ignore our moral compass, we contribute to its decline. A major lesson. 
From the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is the value of staying spiritually aware. Abraham, a key figure, shows this when he learns about the city's upcoming destruction. Instead of just accepting it, he talks to God, seeking insight and hoping for intervention. This shows his spiritual alertness and desire to align with what God wants. In our modern world, this translates to constantly seeking a connection with God in our everyday lives. It means not just following religious rituals blindly, but understanding the deeper meanings and values behind them. By doing so, we can make more informed, morally upright decisions that resonate with our faith. Encouraging a deeper connection with one's faith is not just about personal peace. It's about creating a society that upholds higher moral and ethical standards. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah lack this connection, leading to their ultimate downfall. Now, the men of Sodom were extremely wicked and sinful against the Lord, unashamed in their open sin before Him. Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. This disconnection from spiritual guidance led to societal decay. What does this mean for us today? By fostering a deeper connection with our God and faith, we can develop a moral compass that helps navigate the complexities of modern life. It's about finding guidance in faith to deal with contemporary issues and personal ethical dilemmas. Lastly, discussing the benefits of a spiritually grounded life in the modern world is crucial. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a warning, a reminder of what can happen when a society collectively turns away from spiritual values. In contrast, spiritually grounded life offers numerous benefits. It provides a sense of purpose, guides us in making ethical choices, fosters a community spirit based on shared values and mutual respect. For instance, the biblical principle of loving one's neighbor can be a guiding light in our interactions, promoting kindness, empathy, and understanding in a world often marked by division and strife. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, that is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. This is a direct application of spiritual guidance in everyday life. In conclusion, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, when viewed through the lens of seeking divine guidance, offers rich lessons for our modern world. It's a call to be spiritually aware, to deepen our connection with faith, and to enjoy the benefits of a spiritually grounded life. By doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also contribute to creating a more just, compassionate, and moral society. Let's embrace this journey of faith with open hearts and minds. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in your presence today, we bring before you the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah, ancient cities that once thrived in prosperity, but crumbled under the weight of hidden sins. Lord. Open our hearts and minds as we reflect on the lessons learned in their downfall. Forgive us, God, for the times we've given into sin, just like the people in Sodom and Gomorrah did. We admit that sometimes, while trying to succeed in life, we've forgotten about the sense of right and wrong that you give us. Help us to see that being rich and successful is in everything, and it doesn't really show our true value. Show us how to tell the difference between real success, which comes from your blessings, and the misleading temptation of having too much, which can lead us to make bad choices. Let us be happy with your love and kindness, knowing that real riches come from having a heart that follows what you want for us. Lord, we confess the hidden whispers of sin that may linger in our lives. Light up those secret corners where we harbor thoughts, actions, and intentions contrary to your divine will. Grant us the strength to confront and overcome these hidden sins, empowering us to walk in the light of your truth. We ask for bravery like Lot, who had to live a good life in a place where people did evil. In our everyday lives, when we're around things that could lead us to make wrong choices, it gives us the power to stay true to doing what's right. Help us, God, to avoid things that try to trap us and take us off the path you want us to follow. Lord. When bad influences try to overpower your voice in our hearts, help us to hear what you're telling us. Protect us from harmful things that take advantage of our secret wants and tempt us. Make us stronger in our decision to do the right thing, even when it's tough and we're facing problems. As we navigate the complexities of our modern world, help us embrace the divine intervention you offer. May we be receptive to your warnings, discerning the consequences of our actions before it is too late. Just as you rescued Lot and his family, 
Deliver us from the traps of hidden sins and guide us toward the path of redemption. Lord, we ask for your help for your families, neighborhoods, and societies. As our society faces tough times, let us be examples of good behavior, spreading kindness and understanding. Give us the eyes to see and deal with the problems that are hurting our communities and help us to make things better. Father, we humbly seek your guidance in applying the timeless lessons from the most hidden sins of Sodom and Gomorrah to our lives today. As we reflect, renew our hearts, strengthen us, and grant us the grace to live in alignment with your divine will. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Question. Have you ever stopped to think about the bad habits or wrongdoings you might not notice that are influencing your life, similar to the secret sins that were present in the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah?